Howdy folks, welcome to Beards of Camo. I hope this finds everybody happy and healthy. Sorry I haven't had a video out in a while. I've had my grandchild. He's five years old and has the energy of like that speedy Gonzales. So when he's here, usually we have him about a week. I don't have the time or the energy to do anything else. But anyhow, so he's gone back to his parents. I was out here messing with my tomatoes and Trish said, you ain't had a, ain't done a video in a while. Why don't you? So here it is. All right, so first of all, most of y'all, if not all of y'all, you want to grow tomatoes to eat, right? You don't want to grow leaves. So you need to trim your leaves. And I'll show you how to trim your leaves in this video. There's also sucker leaves that come up in the, in the forks. You need to trim those off. I'm going to show you how to pollinate your blooms. You want to hand pollinate your blooms if you want to get the 90 to 100% of your yield. If you don't care, then don't hand pollinate. Let Mother Nature take care of it. But if you want more, you got to hand pollinate. I'll show you how. Show you a couple other tips. Stay tuned. Now, as you can see, my tomato plant plants look pretty good. That's because I take very good care of them. And actually, this guy here was grown from seed. And maybe that guy. Um, that guy and that guy and that guy were store bought. Just because they're store bought doesn't mean they're going to get bigger because that guy was store bought. But so, anyhow. As you can see here, I have trimmed leaves. Eh? I don't let my leaves touch the ground. Now, the reason why I keep all my leaves up off the ground Trim them all up off the ground is because you can run into a whole bunch of different problems the main problem is when it rains the raindrops hit the dirt they bounce up onto uh, your leaves now as when they hit the ground they will pick up germs and dirt all kinds of stuff which will promote um, leaf rot and I'll show you see that that's blight it'll destroy your whole plant this big daddy was touching the ground that's the one that was touching the ground gotta come off I put some type of cover down to to just to keep the dirt and everything off and if you watch my other videos you know that I use grass clippings and it works see that guy it's starting to get it gotta come off see It's about a half inch from there. It's got to come off. All you do, be careful, go in and cut. Sharp knife or scissors, make sure they're clean, and I come from the bottom up typically. And cut that. Be careful. Go from the bottom down, you may skin your stalk. 
been there done that I'll show you evidence of that see there I messed up I wasn't being careful I skinned my stock that opens up a wound for diseases but what I did is I took some mud and put it on there and so it created a scab you can see here nice clean cut and it created a scab and we're good and some of my plants like this guy is small I don't want to cut that whole uh, limb off but it's about two inches from the ground so I'll come up here right here and I'll just trim that that's okay you can see I done it over here and it's filmed a scab formed a scab we're good I'm going to um, we'll go ahead and cut this one off. This one too. Now your suckers. Right here's one. That I missed. So you got lucky. But. See there. See how it's coming in the V. In the fork. Now, I should have cut that off, but I missed it. But, I'm not going to. And looky here. This is why. See that? That's going to be tomatoes. That. Those little guys. Are going to turn into that. What's going to turn into that? But typically, if it didn't have that, if it didn't have those little buds, I would cut it off right there. And when they're tiny, you can pinch them off. And I check every day. And oh, look at here. Here's one. This guy's popped up. Let's see if I can get it. See it right there? That's a sucker. All it does is take nutrients out. See, I just pulled it right off. Pow. I took a break. Got me something to drink. That sun's a little rough on this old fella. So, I got my suckers off. I trimmed my leaves. Now comes the hand pollinating. Sex with your tomato plant. Here's how you do it. Now before I show you, some people, a good buddy of mine, Bill, we were talking about it. And I showed him how I do it. And I guess he takes, and other people, I've heard of it, I don't do it. Q-tip, inside the bloom, no point in that. Here. Alright. Let's see my blooms. Okay. All your blooms are going to point down. Why are they going to point down? Because your pollen falls down. Gravity does it. Gravity takes care of it. Mother Nature takes care of it. Now what I do, see the stem, see my fingers. Do just like that. Put the stem in between your fingers. Go back and forth. Count to ten. One, two, three, four.
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Pow. Now there's one, two, three, four, five on this here that I just handed, actually seven that I just pollinated. I've also got some over here. I don't know if the camera can see it, but it was also vibrating. I'm going to go ahead and hit that too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine and ten. Do it easy. Don't bang the hell out of it. It's not going to hurt your plan in any way. But you, I have just hand pollinated that simple my blooms. How do I know it works? I'll show you. It works because of that on this same plant I've got those little guys come up from last week come on from last week and I don't know a few years I've been doing this and it's proved itself to this guy stick my hand my fingers in a V peace showing peace and love to my tomato plant put it in there vibrate three four five six seven eight nine ten Okay, we got one, two, three at least. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You're not hurting it, you're making love to it. All right, we got leaves trimmed, suckers pinched off, hand pollinated the blooms. Another thing we're going to do today, we're going to give them some go-go food. Epsom salt. Epsom salt's good for your aching muscles and uh, bruises and sprains. I guess it's good for constipation too. For relief of occasional constipation. So if you can't poop, I guess I'll make you some salt water, huh, Trish? <laughs> you pooping all right, baby? Yes, sir. Here's some laxative. <laughs> I did not know that. I just taught myself some. Back to the tomatoes. <clears throat> and it even says on this particular bag, which I've never even looked at the bag, but. We got my magnesium sulfate in Epsom salt. Your tomatoes love the magnesium. It helps them fruit. It helps them do everything. It's really, really good stuff. It, now, I don't use chemicals. This is the closest to chemicals as I get. All you do is just take your handful. I'm about out of this bag. Just take your handful, sprinkle it around the, the base of the plant. And I'll show you. All right. Just put your handful around your plant, just like that, right at the base. And when it rains or when you water it, it's going to seep down into the roots. Okay? Okay. I 
task is done. See? See? Also put it around my cucumber. Okay. Now this guy here. This is a transplant. This is an Australian Big Red. And actually it's about a foot down. I plant all my tomato plants deep. This guy will grow huge tomatoes. You'll see later. But with me doing Everything I've told you so far and a transplant or transplanting it from here over to here, I've got buds and uh, it went from looking like that guy, which this guy was broke off, nursed and is now getting better went from that to that and I'll show you about that in a bit because you break your tomato plants off it's not the end of it even though this guy looks peaked it's starting to stand up and it's getting firm because of the care I've taken to it now that Australian Red, which before I knew the name of it, my mom had seeds and I grew them. Couldn't remember the name, she couldn't remember the name, so we just called it Bobo's Big Ass Tomatoes. I like that better, but it's, it's an Australian Red. But so, uh, that Australian Red was a volunteer uh, that come up from uh, last year and we're all out of seeds but I found two volunteers as I put that one down here by the cabin and there's one up there in mama's area uh, let's go over here uh, I mentioned breaking off um your tomato plants you can keep your brook off you could even take a stem create a new plant from a stem you know i told you that i planted my australian red about a foot down yeah uh, it's actually best and I'll show you why now if y'all know tomato plants You know that they have little It looks like little bumps on them Let me see if I can find them Can you see the little bumps see that right there at the end of my fingernail little bumps Let's Get it up here Bob Those will produce roots. A tomato plant will produce roots from just about everywhere. Trust me. If you break your tomato plant, like I did this one. Actually, one of the dogs, I think, had um, broke it. And then when I went to tend to it, it just fell over. What I did was put it in, and with this, as there's water, and a tad bit of Epsom salt, just a little bit, some dirt, some coffee grounds. No exact measurement, but look at it. We're at like a week. And it looks as good as the ones that are in the ground. But look, 
no roots. Oh, look, no roots. Okay. Now, can you see? Let's see here. See that little root there? Right at the bottom? That's starting to come out. I'm doing my best to hold it still. We formed a, a scab over the broken area. It'll have roots all over. And then I'll stick it in the ground. And since it's been in this water, let's get it back in the water. And I keep it in the shade. I keep it underneath the porch. We've got a bud. A few buds. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but there's one, two. One, two, three, four, I think. But keep it in the shade until it grows its roots, and then I'll put it in the ground. And that's what had happened with this guy. And it got really droopy on me, but it's been pretty hot. But it's firming up. I'm telling you, this guy will be good. So will this guy. Okay? That's evidence that it works. Over here's another one that uh, this guy here, I just cut it off. And I thought, instead of throwing it away, I'll make another one. And it done that same thing, okay? Put it in water, a little bit of dirt, a little bit of coffee grounds to give the, uh, uh, just a little bit of nutrients, you know, in the, into the water. And uh, let some roots grow on it, and then I transplanted it. Now this one looks kind of peaked too. And it's down there a good ways. And all this will get trimmed off, okay? But you can see now, it's firmed up. Because before it wasn't, days ago it wasn't. I just put that Epsom salt down and I haven't uh, watered them yet. But it's firmed up, standing up, and it'll grow. It's about six, seven inches down. Another thing you need to look out for on your tomato plants is pests. Aphids, caterpillars, uh, hornworms, they're your enemies. They're bad. They will kill your tomato plants. I love animals, I love nature. But anything messes with my plants, it's got to die. Now look at here. Uh, well, just show you. Let's see if I can get it in. Right there. See it right above? See that little green thing right above my fingernail? That's an aphid. Aphids suck the life out of your aphids suck the life out of your plants well I think I'm about done um, I hope you learned something I'm done yakking um, I'm done with my tomatoes for the day I'm gonna go tend to mama's tomatoes you guys be safe to, safe out there fix your muffler Believe it or not, that was a minivan. Uh, get outside. It might be hot, but it's good for you. You guys stay safe. Spread my video around. Hit that like button. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Leave me a comment. 
or not, whatever. And as always, I love you. God loves you. We out.